Sup Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So recently, the idea of cryotherapy has been gaining some traction thanks largely in part to this post by Magic Bolt, who is the legendary Redditor who has convinced hair loss sufferers all over the world to finally stop skipping leg day. So recently, this post of his posits the idea that exposure to cold can help stop hair loss and regrow your hair. At first this sounded completely crazy to me, but upon reading the post as well as doing some research myself, I realized that it actually isn't a crazy idea at all. In fact, using cryotherapy to preserve hair is something that is currently in practice and it turns out that we do have some scientific research which backs up this idea. But before anyone starts putting an ice pack on their head to regrow their hair, let's first go balls deep on the research and find out what this is all about because it's not as simple as it may seem. Now, of course, you can go ahead and read this Reddit post for yourself, but it's a very long post with dozens of references and not only that, but this is just the second in a series of 10 posts with 8 or more posts to come. So, I'd rather not repeat what's in this Reddit post because even though it is definitely interesting, a lot of it is based on speculation and theorizing, which is fine of course. There is also a lot of detail about different cold receptors in the skin and how they interact with androgens, but I think the most interesting research actually has nothing at all to do with those cold receptors. Before I get into what I think is the most exciting research, I'll just take a moment to talk about one specific situation where cold therapy is already being used to preserve hair. Here you see what's called a cold cap. and these cold caps are commonly used during cancer chemotherapy. Cold caps are kind of like miniature refrigerators placed directly on top of the head. Cancer chemotherapy is extremely toxic to the hair follicles as well as many other systems of the body. The chemicals used for chemotherapy cause what's called antigen effluvium, not to be confused with telogen effluvium. Antigen effluvium is like telogen effluvium, except instead of losing hair in the telogen resting phase of the hair loss cycle, you lose hair in the antigen growth phase. Since that represents about 90 percent of your hair, people with antigen effluvium lose pretty much all their hair in just a few weeks after getting chemotherapy. One way to prevent this problem is by cooling the scalp. The reason this works is because cooling the scalp causes constriction of the blood vessels. This actually decreases blood flow to the scalp. This reduction of blood flow results in less of the chemotherapy going to the scalp, so there is less of a toxic effect on the hair follicles. However, this is a very specific use of cold therapy, and it probably doesn't apply to your average hair loss sufferer who has androgenic alopecia. But it turns out there is another reason to think that chilling the scalp might be a good general hair growth stimulant that will benefit everybody who is losing their hair, and that reason has to do with goosebumps. So, what is the purpose of goosebumps? Most frequently, goosebumps are a response to cold weather. You can also get them if you are frightened. That may be the reason why the children's horror books written by R.L. Stein in the 1990s were called goosebumps. Humans are mammals, and all mammals get goosebumps when they are cold. The reason we mammals get goosebumps is because it is supposed to increase body warmth, just like shivering, which is another response to being cold. In many animals with a coat of fur, the erect hairs caused by goosebumps trap air to cause a layer of insulation which warms the animal. However, humans don't have a thick coat of fur, so goosebumps can be considered an evolutionary relic since they are a feature that probably doesn't cause much warming at all in human beings. But perhaps goosebumps aren't entirely pointless after all since there does seem to be a link between androgenic alopecia and goosebumps, believe it or not. To better explain this, first let's go ahead and look at what causes the hairs to stand up and the skin to pucker up when we get goosebumps. It's all due to an extremely tiny muscle called the erector pili muscle. Even though it is extremely small, there are literally millions of these muscles in the body. As you can see, the erector pili muscle attaches the hair follicle to the upper layers of the skin. When the erector pili muscle, or AP muscle, is stimulated by the sympathetic nervous system, it contracts and straightens the hair, causing goosebumps. It turns out that the AP muscle is linked to antrionic alopecia in kind of a weird way. In late stage antrionic alopecia, the AP muscle gets replaced with fatty tissue and becomes detached from the hair follicle. In fact, once the AP muscle degenerates or becomes disconnected from the hair follicle, the hair cannot regrow under any circumstances, even with very strong treatment. That's why even some male to female trans women require hair transplants. Now, it's not clear what causes this regression of the AP muscle, but it seems to be related to the progression of antrionic alopecia. 
Snapchat. Now, at this point, I'm sure someone in the comments section is writing right now, Hey Kevin, I've already figured out how cold might help prevent hair loss. You see, if you take a cold shower every day, you'll exercise those AP muscles because you'll get goosebumps, and the exercise will strengthen those muscles just like any other muscle you strengthen. That will keep them strong and prevent our hair loss from getting worse. Well, that's not a terrible theory, and it's one I've thought about myself, but there's definitely more to this than just that. There are two other factors I haven't mentioned yet that provide hints as to what's really going on with our hair when we get cold. The first factor is that the AP muscle attaches to what's called the hair bulge of the hair follicle. The hair bulge is a part of the follicle that contains stem cells that cause the hair follicles to regenerate with each new hair cycle. The second factor brings us back to our roots, back when our ancestors were at one time mammals covered with a full coat of body hair. Wild animals grow a thicker coat of fur in the winter compared to in the summer. It seems possible that cold weather triggers this increased hair growth, and we now have research that confirms it. And the way it does this is through the same mechanism that causes goosebumps. The research that provides the link between goosebumps and hair growth is this study here. However, the findings of the study are summarized very well in this article here. What the research showed was that the nerves that stimulate the AP muscles to cause piloerection, which is the technical name for goosebumps, these same nerves also extend past the muscle to reach the hair follicle, and they can stimulate a new hair growth cycle. As the figure shows, getting acutely cold stimulates goosebumps, but chronic cold or repeated cold actually triggers hair in the telogen resting phase to activate the stem cells in the hair bulge and start a new antigen growth phase. The study was done in mice, and it showed that blocking the nerves that are activated by cold delayed hair regrowth in those mice. However, exposure to cold in these mice accelerated the antigen growth phase, as you can see from this figure from the study. Here's a quote from one of the authors of the study. Quote, it's a two-layer response. Goosebumps are a quick way to provide some sort of relief in the short term, but when the cold lasts, this becomes a nice mechanism for the stem cells to know it's maybe time to regenerate a new hair coat." Unquote. This would also explain why hair loss becomes irreversible when the AP muscle is lost, even with dutasteride. The muscle forms a bridge that carries the nerves to the hair follicle. Once that bridge is gone, though, the nerves can't stimulate a new antigen growth phase. So. There are some other studies showing that cold temperatures may stimulate some hair growth factors like VEGF, and I'll link all the relevant studies below, but keep in mind, Chums, that this is all animal research we're talking about here. However, since humans preserve the goosebumps response, even though it is useless for keeping humans warm, it is certainly possible that humans have a hair growth response to prolong cold too. So, even though we obviously need more human studies before I can recommend jumping into a cold shower or freezing your balls off in an ice bath, I still think that this theory has potential. But no matter what your take is on this, it is still very important not to stick your head in the snow and lose sight of the fact that the trash hormone DHT is still the culprit for hair loss in androgenic alopecia. So you certainly can't think of cold therapy as any kind of substitute for lowering DHT levels by using a 5-AR inhibitor like finasteride or dutasteride. But you know what? We're entering winter now, at least in the northern hemisphere. So maybe some people think they'll regrow their hair while they're outside freezing their asses off shoveling snow, but I don't think it's that simple. I don't think any any established therapy exists for this yet, and if it ever does exist, it will likely be something similar to what we see in chemotherapy treatment. So if you see hair guards start selling something like a freeze comb, then just know that it's a complete scam. This theory isn't completely worthless like the debunked Blutflow theory, but it's something that definitely needs to be followed up on with vigorous human clinical trials before we can draw any strong conclusions. But hopefully this video, as well as Magic Bolt's work, will bring more attention to it in the near future. So now, I've got some more content coming soon, of course. Jones. But tonight, I'm going to be playing Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver 1 and 2 remastered on my PS5 Pro that my wife's boyfriend bought for me. This is a remaster of two of my favorite games ever on the PlayStation 1, and I am so pumped that I'm about to play them again for the first time in decades. And I really hope that this game sells extremely well so that there will be a renewed interest in this criminally underrated franchise that I love from my young adulthood. But worry not, Jones. I'll be back with more Prem content very soon. Thank you for watching. God bless.